One of the major worries that parents have whenever they relocate from a country like Nigeria to a country like the UK or Canada is how are their kids going to adjust to the new educational system or the educational system of the country they are moving to. Because we all know that things are kind of different. The way our educational system is in Nigeria is kind of different from how it is in countries like the UK and Canada. Now, it's not completely different, okay, because some schools in Nigeria actually practice like a hybrid like the schools my kids were in before it was a hybrid of the british curriculum mixed with the nigerian curriculum okay but aside the curriculum the method of teaching is totally different in nigeria at three years old you're already reading you're already writing you already have assignments like they're already expecting you to know your abc's to z right but when you move to a country like the uk your child at three years old is not even supposed to be in school. Your child cannot even get a slot to be in school. Your child can only be in maybe daycare, okay, or preschool at some point. So those are the things that parents are, you know, usually worried about and, you know, they find it hard adjusting. At least, let me speak for myself, that's one of the worries I had coming to the UK. I've also heard from different parents, you know, who express the same worry. I've even seen on social media people complaining about how their children are not really learning much here. People feel like the system here is too relaxed. I'll get to that later on, but they feel like it's too relaxed compared to what we had in Nigeria. Someone said that in Nigeria, they teach you the what and the when, while in the UK or Canada, they teach you the how and the why. Um, I don't know if I completely agree with that, but you guys, you know, you get the point, you get the picture. So personally, I made a conscious effort when I moved here to help my kids adjust seamlessly and to also make sure that I am on point with their education, okay? Uh, I'm going to be sharing with you guys the different ways I've been able to help my kids to adjust to the new curriculum and also how I help them with their education aside what they learn in school. So the first thing for me is extracurricular activities. That's one of the things that I appreciate the most about the UK they have a lot of extracurricular activities but the thing is with many immigrant parents when they come to this country they are working they are schooling they might not really have time to sign their kids up for some of these extracurricular activities and also some of us when we came here our kids were under the official school age and we couldn't get slots in preschool or in daycares around so we had to stay with our kids or even for our older kids who got spaces in school and already attending you know primary school here or even secondary school here if you want to help your kids to catch up faster or you want to help them with the extracurricular activities like i mentioned or you want to help them with specific subjects i will recommend out school for that okay out school is an online learning platform that is for kids between the age of three and 18. I signed my kids up on the platform and I have been loving it so far, you guys. They have a wide variety of topics, of subjects, of classes, and they have experts, okay? So the teachers on the platform have been vetted and they are experts in whatever field they are teaching on, okay? Whatever subject they are teaching on. And you can find very interesting, engaging classes that suits your children's interests. And when I say wide range of topics, you guys, I mean, they have fitness there, okay? They have coding, they have tech, they have like full-on curriculums, like you want the maths, the English, and stuff like that, right? But if you also want like singing classes, uh, beginner classes for languages or financial literacy, social skills, you name it. Like, it's so interesting. See what Cora drew just after one hour of art and sketching class. You guys, I was mind blown because when she started drawing, she was drawing two circles. I was like, okay, it's just going to be one of those things. When I came back, I was mind blown. I was like, what? And you guys know that I actually like art a lot. So when I got on the platform, I tried to look for classes that my kids will be interested in, as well as classes that I want them to take, okay? So I like the fact that it's very flexible and you can just build your own curriculum. I also gave Cora some freedom to choose some classes for herself and she really loved it. I feel like she felt empowered being able to choose her classes and decide what she wanted to learn. She was so excited showing her sisters what she did in coding class because she was able to do a little game from just one class of coding. She was so excited showing her sisters. Um, even Sophia has story time that she attends, like actual story time classes for 
preschool then even the language i've not done the language yet but i want to i want to sign them up for beginner classes for french language so yeah i love the fact that you can just personalize the classes that you take on there and it will suit your child's interest so even if you are homeschooling your children you can just choose the specific subjects that you want your children to learn instead of them to just because i mean it's 2024 with the advancements in ai technology and stuff like that we cannot afford to only be exposing our kids to what we were exposed to when we were growing up okay like right now we have to be very very intentional with the kind of subjects and topics that we expose our kids to so that our kids will fly especially for nigerian parents i know that we want our kids to fly <laughs> like let's not even deny that fact we always want our kids to be above and beyond and a platform like out school will help your child to catch up and also excel not just catch up but to excel in school so yeah get 20 percent of your first class at out school by using my code at daisy space okay i'm going to leave the link down below and also in the description box just go and check it out click on the link and sign up and make use of your 20 percent off thank you to out school for sponsoring this video now what i've even decided to do is that on some weekends when i'm just thinking of something to use and keep my kids busy i'll just sign them up for one art class or something <laughs> just sign them up for one art class and realize, okay for one hour i have peace and quiet <laughs> Another way I actually stay on top of my kids' education is by buying them books, okay? I buy my kids a lot of books and I try to encourage my kids to read, okay? Reading is very, very important. Initially, it was a bit difficult getting my kids to just settle down and read. But right now, they've gotten used to it and even before bed, on their own, they'll be like, oh, they want to read before they sleep. Someone like Cora will come and meet me that, oh, can she just read for like 30 minutes before she sleeps? I'm like, go ahead, my dear. <laughs> I'm not gonna stop you like go ahead so yeah I buy them lots of books another thing I did was to get them designated reading or study areas okay so in their rooms I mean their rooms are not that big or not as big as what I'm used to but I still found a space to get them each a small desk with the um, pegboards and you know I got Cora a laptop I put their colorful pencils their books inside the drawer of their table they have like sheets and sheets of paper that they can color on they can write on and i make sure that whenever they want to study they stay at their table this helps them to be more interested in studying okay because they have designated spaces each now for sophia she doesn't really have like a designated space but i created a little reading nook under the staircase so that's sophia's corner even though to be honest she doesn't really use it like that but yeah overall i feel like them having their study areas actually helps a lot because even under the staircase as much as she doesn't really read there she stays there to color sometimes to play to role play to do her art whatever so you know it's worth it another thing i do with them a lot is i chat with my kids a lot i have real conversations with my kids and i i feel like my kids are such interesting people <laughs> Trust me, the reason why you might be bored of your kids or you might not really feel like you can chat with your kids is because you don't do it. If you chat with your kids more often, if you calm down, if you're patient enough and you have extended conversations with your kids, if you listen to your kids, they are actually quite interesting to be around. I mean, like, I can speak for my kids, yeah. They are actually like my best friends <laughs> so i always have chats with them about school who are your best friends what is your best subject what do you like what do you not like what did you learn today one thing i always do with them is whenever i pick them up from school in a car i'll be asking them okay tell me something that you learned today that you feel like none of us know about okay so just teach us something interesting you learned in school today that you feel like you might not know about so you know they always come up with very interesting things some of them i already know about them but you know i act like i don't really know about it but like oh you, are you serious wow okay tell me more and they will tell you it helps me understand where they are with their, edu with their education or with their learning and it also helps them like solidify what they have learned okay like to reinforce sorry yeah that's the word reinforce what they have learned okay so i always have chats with them and talk to them about school but even aside them learning 
for their social angle as well i want to be sure that they're not being bullied they're not being harassed you know they're immigrant kids they are new in sophia school she's the only black child there and you know so far so good she has not had any experience that i will consider oh this is out of the norm of what normal children experiences okay but it's something that i know because i actually talk with them okay so i talk with them all the time i know who their friends are i know when they make new friends i know the teachers they like and stuff like that so yeah have a chat with your kids another thing that helps with their learning as well is watching movies and discussing those movies with them okay so when a movie is rated pg it means parental guidance it means that the child should watch that movie with a parent okay that's how that's what that's what i, I feel though i'm not really sure <laughs> but i feel like it means that you should watch that that movie with your child so that when your child sees certain things on screen you'll be able to explain what that thing is to your child or be able to disabuse their minds from certain things that they might see on screen. Okay, so whenever I watch movies with my kids, we always chat, like we'll have conversations about it. My kids are very interested. Though. One thing I like to watch with them a lot is um, the Airbender series, okay? The Avatar series, not Airbender, the Avatar series. So we watch um, Avatar the Airbender, the, the last Airbender, and we also watch um, the Legend of Korra, okay? We started watching Legend of Korra because my child's name is Korra. So we watch this series, especially when I'm making their hair, and we are chatting, we are laughing, we are dissecting things that happened in the, in the series. We have very enlightening conversations. I say even Sophia, that is just three, Sophia is very smart when it comes to certain things. Like, now the things that she says, and I'm like, who just said that? Like, is this Sophia? So for instance, if you call a certain city in in the avatar kingdom she will tell you what their power is okay what their bending power is so they have like air bending fire bending earth bending it was all kinds of bending right sophia once you see somebody if you, if you ask her what's this person's um, um power she'll tell you air bending if you even call the name of the city she'll tell you if you, you know you get so it's very interesting for me to just see my children that they are assimilating and they understand what they are seeing the other day cora asked me that hold up we don't see air right like we can't see air why is it that when they are bending air we can see what they are bending and i was like hmm the reason why you can see what they are bending is because when the air is moving around, it is picking up particles in their surroundings. So it's actually the particles that you are seeing, not the air, okay? I tried to explain it that way, even though I know that for cartoon's sake and for effect sake, they made it visible. But, you know, the fact that she's thinking that far shows that the wheels are working, okay? The wheels <laughs> in her brain are working. So the same thing, even with Ava, when something happens, Ava will say, but why didn't you do that instead of doing this, okay? Why didn't you run? Why did you have to fight? Things like that, I pick up on them very quickly and I try to explain things to them and have extended conversations with them about it. And from talking about airbending, we start talking about, you know, what the air is comprised of, the elements in the, in the air, why is air or why are they called elements, okay? Why is this like that, you know? these are very important so don't neglect movie time with your kids it might sound trivial it might sound like some of you just put on the movie and walk away i'm not trying to judge but i'm just saying if you can please sit down with your kids and have conversations about the movies they are watching and so that you know what they are watching because you might your child might, might be displaying a certain character and be wondering where did this child learn this from go and check what they are watching so when i when i'm watching things with my children in fact they know what they cannot watch because once i just see a movie that just eh, or a series or a cartoon that is just in eh, i'm like you can't watch that right or if we are watching and something happens and i feel like eh, let them not think that this thing is actually okay i immediately on the spot i'm like this thing this person did in that movie is not okay okay do you know why it's not okay <laughs> okay okay <laughs> do you know why it's not okay it is not okay because you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that it's not good to do this it's not good to do that and that's how they learn i do the same thing for i do the same thing with even christian um, movies or series or even reading the bible i do it with them as well so whenever i watch something on, on the tv and i don't understand like on, in super book and stuff like that i try to explain it to them that's how these kids learn okay everything cannot be taught to them in the four walls of a classroom and even what is taught to them in the four walls of the classroom is not enough Okay, it's not enough. So, I mean, even on the specific subject, like even in English, math, what they learn in school is not enough. You need to actually put in extra eyes 
on them. So there are different ways to do this. Either you do it yourself or you, you know, sign up to something like out school, okay? Now, another way I help them with learning about their environment and with their social skills is that I take them out very often, okay? So I, anywhere I go, basically, they follow me. <laughs> it's not even a choice, but I take them out specifically to places like the park or play areas where they can meet other kids and they can play and i watch them when they play okay i watch how they interact with other children and so far so good i'm very impressed with how my kids are able to just walk up to random kids and just speak to them with confidence okay my kids when they're talking to random kids you know or just strangers they are not shy or they are not rude or they are not just cowering in a corner they actually confidently go and speak with those people even sometimes when they don't really care i'm like see that there's a new girl in the park go and meet her go and talk to her ask her what her name is and say hi to her and they'll just go hi what's your name my name is cora these are these are these are things that I look out for okay when i take them out these are things i try to encourage and even when my kids are playing i notice that they learn how they know how to share they know how to take turns they are not whining they're not you know you, you know what i mean they're not those kids that we don't like in the park okay my kids are not those kids that we try to avoid in the park right and i like it now does it mean that even at home they are very well behaved no when they play with themselves at home they might not be so you know, she, they, they might not be so nice. <laughs> they might not really be good with sharing and taking turns when they are at home. But even at that, to me, it's still a positive because it means that they understand that when you are outside, you need to comport yourself, you need to behave a certain way when you're in public. But yeah, so basically, learning is not just about the four walls of your classroom. It's not just about maths, English. That's one thing I feel like a lot of immigrant parents, especially Nigerian parents, but I feel like Indians to have the same complaints or the same experience, right? Everything is not English, maths. I want my child to be able to set the times table from one to 1,000. I want my child to be able to calculate this. I want my child to be able... I'm not saying those things are, are bad. I'm not saying that it's not important to know their maths and their English and their science and stuff like that. No, they... I actually make sure my kids are also on point with all of that. However, there is more to life than that okay especially in this day and age we have moved past a lot of things that we learned as you know kids we have moved past a lot of that so try to make sure that you engage your kids in more ways than just the regular uh, uh school curriculum right in more ways than that even that fitness stuff gymnastics uh, um, running coding i even saw minecraft something something and i was like oh, how how this video is just to encourage parents out there you're not alone i understand your struggles i understand that you know we have a lot on our heads especially when we move to a new country but please in the pursuit of money in the pursuit of stability in the pursuit of you know happiness do not neglect your kids okay because what is the point of gaining every other thing and your kids losing out for me if you ask me why do i do the things i do right now it is because of my kids so i will not say oh i'm trying to build my kids future in terms of oh trying to make money trying to save trying to acquire properties and stuff like that i'm trying to build my kids future and then i now neglect the actual kids <laughs> like make it make sense but yeah let me know your thoughts in the comment section what are the ways that you help your immigrant kids to adjust to their new system adjust to new life here learning here and do you have a problem with the way they learn here? I know that some Nigerians are like, what, what if I joking here? Me, personally, I feel like that thing you call joke, hey, you better take it seriously because it's very, very important. Um, yeah, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.